Hello, I'm Michael Climes and I'm the news editor at Money Marketing. I'm very happy to welcome you to our pre-budget preview video, where I and my esteemed colleague, chief reporter, Lois Vallely, are going to give you a breakdown of what, what you, our readers, financial advisors can expect from what is set to be a landmark budget. Lois, what do you think our readers should be looking out for? Um, so certainly with the 26th Conference of the Parties coming up in Glasgow um, at the weekend, this is a key budget for investment into green energy and renewables. Um, so ahead of the budget, the government has already made a raft of um, commitments and announcements in this area. Um, one of those is the UK announced plans to launch a £400 million package of investment through its par uh, partnership with Bill Gates um, to develop green technologies. Um, the UK government's also set out its long-awaited net zero strategy um, to reduce emissions. So this includes a big push on electric vehicles, um, with an extra £350 million being spent to support the electrification of UK fleets and £620 million being set aside for increased um, charging infrastructure. Um, and this investment obviously supports the government's ban that it announced last year on the sale of new um, petrol and diesel diesel vehicles by 2030. Um, so that's expected to be a big issue for government this year. Um, the government also recently announced its first ever green gilts, which are expected to raise a minimum of 15 billion pounds. That's a huge new development, for, isn't it? That's a it really, is, really yeah. big thing, under, underscoring their ambitions to really push this green agenda. Yeah, exactly. Um, and apparently they, I've heard that they secured 100 billion pounds worth of um, orders for those. So that is something that I've heard might come up in the budget. Um, the Chancellor might sort of announce more green gilts being launched. Do you think that's something that uh, uh, our readership advisors will welcome? All these green green announcements? We have loads of comments on our websites from very uh, uh, opinionated uh, financial advisors. Um, and one thing that we do know about financial advisors is that they have very colourful opinions and they don't mind expressing them. Mm. So if Rishi's coming out with all, all of um, these green policies, how do you think some of our, our online um, commentators, as it were, who post on our website might react? Do you think it will be a warm reception? Um, well, I have obviously, I've written about ESG and sustainability quite a bit since I joined Money Marketing and quite a few of my articles get comments um, calling ESG and sustainability sort of woke nonsense and <laughs> that it's just a sort of temporary fad. But I don't think that's um, something that they should be necessarily thinking. I think it's really important they do get on board with these sort of green um, commitments and yeah, because it's vital for the future of our planet. It's also really interesting for me what you say, because I think that's um, a nice segue into some of the things that I'm expecting, because my background is obviously uh, pensions. Um, and it seems that, um, from my perspective, that the government's attitude towards pensions and the Treasury's attitude especially um, has changed because um, we've heard a lot about Build Back Better, uh, levelling up. And it seems to me that the uh, government views pensions with the massive amounts of money there as mm -hmm. a potential uh, uh, sort of money pot, which they can use to um, uh, uh, invest in the north, invest in levelling up, invest in the green agenda and all these infrastructure pro projects. Um, and, and the fact that you, know, you mentioned the green bonds, I think, is very, very significant um, because it seems that the, uh, the government... Um, is trying to square the circle of of uh, levelling up through um, uh, green jobs, a green a green agenda, but it might not al al always work work that way. Uh, and I think with your background uh, as a energy, uh, mm. a bit of an energy reporter be beforehand, you definitely know about the, the some of the contradictions there. Yeah, definitely. I was going to come on to that because obviously the big. Um thing in the news at the moment is all these energy suppliers going out of business and a massive spike in energy prices um, and I think that's something that will come up in the budget um, one of the things that's been blamed for that is green subsidies and another is um, the suggestion that the government's sort of switched from fossil fuels too quickly and has, has sort of wound down these coal mm -hmm. and gas plants much too quickly without anything much in its place because obviously renewables are quite intermittent um, so I think it will be really important for the Chancellor to show in his 
budget that he is committed to greening the economy, but that it won't stop growth of the economy. Um, there have been suggestions as well that he might um, cut the price of energy for um, customers, which mm -hmm. is an interesting suggestion. It will be very yeah, interesting to see how he does that because... Um, there's already a energy price cap and that's part of what's been blamed for putting these energy suppliers out of business as well. Um, one, one way that I've read that he might do that is to cut VAT on home energy. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he says on that, definitely. That's really interesting. I think also it's it's, it's uh, fascinating to see how that um, goes into the narrative of, of levelling up because in the last budget um, he introduced quite a few... Um, uh, tax threshold. So one of them was was capital gains, um, and I know that the Office for Tax Simplification, I think, has um, recommended um, aligning um, sort of capital gains tax with income t with income tax. Mm. Um, and uh, if he if he does do that, that might be something uh, quite sort of uh, pop populist in the mm. sense that it's showing that he's hammering um, the, the rich. Um, and a sort of a lot of, a, a lot of uh, advisors, uh, clients, because advisors tend to um, obviously cater to uh, a demographic um, which tend of people who tend to be older um, and and richer. And I think that might potentially feed into to pensions too, because mm -hmm. um, the government gives away I think about forty billion annually in in tax relief uh, to uh, to pensions, and it works on um, the more income tax you pay, the more relief you get mm. so you could argue it's it's potentially aggressive so he might maybe try and do try and do something there um i, I don't know to show that um they're raising money for those um formerly uh, uh, uh formerly the red wall in the north now now, now the blue wall mm. um tories who really feel that they need something from um, from uh, from from the government and, and 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 Boris Johnson in that sense. So politically, I think that's that's really uh, in interesting. Interesting yeah, there. That uh, there's also the suggestion of a one-off wealth wealth tax to um, help yes. recover from the COVID nineteen pandemic. So um, I saw recently that um, a group of thirty UK millionaires has written an open letter to the Chancellor, asking him to tax them. Um, and they say that the planned 1.25 percentage point increase in national insurance um, contributions would hit working people, so they want the tax on them instead. Um, and I read some research by Greenwich University recently which suggested a wealth tax um, on the top 1% of UK households, um, and that is all those with fortunes of more than £3.6 million, pounds, um, could generate at least £70 billion pounds a year. So it seems like it would be a reasonable solution. <laughs> No, that's fascinating, and I think that the budget uh, will probably really play out that tension between are you taxing um, um, in, um, income and quote maybe you know working people, or are you taxing sort of capital, um, which is rich people, and that's maybe where the capital gains um, comes in. I think one more which might be be interesting is the treatment of um, inheritance tax regarding pensions, mm. because at the minute if you die before you're seven, seventy five, um, you pay no inheritance. Uh, tax on on the on the pension, so you can transfer all the pension to your um, dependent spouse or or, or ch children or, or or whatever who you ever want to nominate on the, the form. So it'll be interesting to see if if that changes um, uh, too, because there's an increasingly I think intergenerational uh, point to all this with with old, older voters um, who uh, uh, are seen as I'm not saying it's right or wrong having a bit more of uh, of the wealth in the country and getting a bit more of the social spending versus younger voters mm. um uh, working age people who don't so yeah he's definitely. got a fine line to that walk be interesting <laughs> indeed uh thank you thank you very much for joining us uh, and i hope you've enjoyed uh, our uh, pre-budget video and uh follow us on the day because there'll be loads of great coverage um from our reporters um, and uh, so follow the Money Marketing website, um, our uh, LinkedIn account, and our Twitter channel. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.